morning folks, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to the little Renault. Now uh, we've got a busy day ahead of us, we've got 10 cars to pick up locally. Uh, but what I'm also going to do is give you a brief tour of the little Renault Transporter. Uh, going to answer a few of your questions like how we use the spec, the spec, uh, wire cross strap and uh, a few other of your queries. So yeah, let's jump in the cab, let's get cracking because it's cold. It's a cold Monday morning and uh, yeah, let's go. Right guys, all our daily checks are done, uh, everything's sorted out, we're all good to go. So our first drop is about, uh, sorry, our first collection is about 20 minutes away in uh, Wimborne. Um, and one of the biggest challenges for this job is trying to work out what to do first. So we've got 10 cars, um, so what you've basically got to do is you've got to work out that some cars can only be picked up after a certain time, say for instance 10 o'clock, so we couldn't go and do them first because uh, our first, what I wanted to do as our first car, it was a Weymouth one, so it's the furthest away, I want to do that first, get that done and dusted, but that, that can't be collected till after 10 o'clock. Then you've got to work out the size of the vehicles and the positions uh, on the truck, so if you've got something really high, that can't go under the bed, um, and you obviously want the longer stuff, like an estate, to be on the back of the bed, because then the back end of the car will overhang. Um, you know, there, there, there's a few different variables, but you've, also, you've got to work out where on the truck your car's going to fall, uh, so then you can plan. Uh, but then you've also got to plan your route as well, because you don't want to be going 20 miles that way, and then 20 miles back, then 20 miles out, and then 20 miles back that way. You want to pick them up sort of in clusters, so it, it is, it's, it's like a massive jigsaw puzzle. Um, so in one cluster, if you've got like three or four big cars, then you just can't do it. Uh, you have to venture out of that cluster, pick up a couple of small ones, and then go back and pick up another big one. Um, it's just the way it is. Uh, so yeah, what we, I've worked out a basic route. We've got two cars to collect from two locations. So uh, that's our first four out of the way. So I'm gonna try and do them first. Then we're gonna shoot over to Weymouth. Um, hopefully the order that I've got them on, they should fit on the truck, but We'll see. <laughs> right, you'll have to excuse me a little bit today. I've got a stuffy nose. I've had a snuff, stuffy nose all weekend. Nothing else, just a stuffy nose. Ah, actually, before I go anywhere, I need to uh, type this phone number in my phone so I can let these people know that we're on our way. See, that's the other thing where you can't really start too early as well because it's like 10 to 7 now. So do you phone people up? 6.45 or 6.50 deemed too early? I don't know. It would be too early if I was furloughed, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Right, we've got a boost pack. Oh, someone was asking about the boost pack in the last, uh, in the comments on the last video. Um, it's actually a snap-on boost pack, so it, it's a it's a big beast. I literally use it several times a day and charge it up once a week, and it will start anything. Um, so yeah, it's a snap-on one. They're not cheap. I've looked them up. They are definitely not cheap. It's the Portable Power 1700. Right, there's nobody else in here, so we've got to lock these gates up. I shall be back shortly. Box. There we go. 
So yeah, it's like three degrees or something and a really bitter cold wind. It's really chilly. I wish I brought my hat in. Um, so yeah, it's Monday. It's the day after Boris last night announced the relaxation of the lockdown rules. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, a bit too high. Come on, down, see. Down, 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 down. Um, so yeah, we've had a relaxation of the lockdown rules. Which means that the roads are going to be busier. Which means it could take us even longer. <laughs> Right, so that's our first two loaded up. A bit warm now, take that off. Ooh. So yeah, it was a Freelander and a Voxel Astra. Oh, and now my pen's gone. Ugh. It's lovely that the sun's out, but it is chilly out there until you get in here and then it's very warm. So our next one is another double collection and it is just round the corner. Um, so, what do you want? Suspension up, PTO off, hazards off, into drive, handbrake off, mirrors, mirrors, and away we go. So, yeah, I put the, uh, the Freelander on first. So we could get it up in the air because it. I don't know. If, I don't think a freelander would fit underneath in position number two, where we've got the Astra. So that's my reasoning for coming to this address first to get that freelander on there. Right. Of course, it's still 
it's still locked down, so residential streets are still rammed with cars. Makes for interesting driving. I just realised that my windscreen's really dirty as well. Okay. get the bugs off better get the dust off. Just tight down through here. That's a little bit better. So yeah, um, two more cars to pick up this one, a Ford KA and a Punto, so I'm going to stick the KA on the back and stick the Punto on the spec. That's if the Punto hasn't got flat tyres on the rear. And then what I'll do this afternoon is I'll give you a, a very brief tour around the description. A lot of people saying that the, uh, I've just realised actually, a lot of people saying that the, um, that my dashboard on the, this Renault looks very sad. And I see what they mean. <laughs> it, is, uh, it does look very sad. <laughs> Sorry if there's any wind noise guys, it's a bit a bit blowy out here today, but um, I just want to uh, clarify a few things really. Um, I've had a few people saying that they're, they're not very happy and they're a bit concerned about the way I stra uh, strap a vehicle. I do this cross strapping like this. Um, the reason I do that is because of the way the, um, the mounting points are on the truck. So I've got this one here and I could pull that one forward. But then if you look at the back one, look at the back mounting point here, it's almost in line with the mag wheel and there's nothing behind it. So that wouldn't stop it from going forwards. That's just, it's, it, it's too much in line with the wheel. Um, it's the same with this one here, look. So you've got this one here, so I could use that, pull it backwards. But in the front, that's my coat. And so if I put that there, there'd be nothing stopping it from coming backwards. Um, so yeah, that's the reason why they're cross strapped. That's sort of the easiest way to do it with the mounting points on this truck. That's, that's the only reason. Um, a lot of people asking or saying that we're, that we're strapping in the incorrect way. That we're not using uh, the over wheel uh, webbed straps and stuff like that. And it's a much more, at the end of the day, this is the salvage industry, you know. Th th these are salvage trucks. They're salvage straps, they come with, um, you know, that meaty hook on a structural part of the vehicle is going to hold uh, a lot better than a wheel strap wheel. You know, these aren't new cars. You know, if you do new deliveries where you're trying to protect the car, then yes, you'll use wheel straps and to secure the vehicle. But we're not. We're not concerned about the vehicles. Um, so, we're, you know, hook it onto a really strong part of the car 
ratchet it down, that ain't going to go anywhere. Um, you know, a lot of the cars we pick up, they're burnt out or they don't have wheels or the wheels are punctured. What do you do with wheel straps then? There's not a lot you can do. So these ratchet straps with these massive meaty hooks on them on a structural part of the vehicle are going to be much more efficient at holding the vehicle down than the web straps over the wheel. Right, I've had a lot of you guys asking how the spec lift works. So we've got a little punto here, a little punto, and we're going to put it on the spec lift here. Um, so first thing we need to do, ugh, first thing we need to do is we need to extend it and lower it so it's on the floor. Okay, so that's locked in now. Then we've got to come round. Once we flip that over, the wheels sit in the two, in the two things there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. So next up, we've got to put the locking pin in. Put the fridge. Now we've got a winter car onto the, uh, onto the spec lift. So this is a non-runner, it's got no starter motor in it. So normally we just drive them on, but in this case we can, so our handy little winter remote. Right, I'm just going to jump in to steer it. There we go, so as you can see, front wheels are sat in the block now. Also, if you've got smaller wheels, that back bar will come forward, or bigger wheels that go backwards. And also, this whole thing will move, move out, extend. So if you get a wider car, or a big van, or anything like that, it all fits. So uh, now we've got to do is lift it up, and uh, get it up off the ground. So effectively, you're using it like a trailer. Next thing to do is get some straps, strap the wheels in, and uh, then we've got to put a safety chain round, trailer board on, let the handbrake off, make sure the steering's unlocked. Uh, yeah, and then we're pretty much good to go. Right, that's it, we're all done, we're all ready to go. Just put the uh, trailer board on there. Done a light check, all the lights are working. Just clips in at the top of the boot and on the bottom of the bumper. Um, just round the cable, all the way down the side of the car. Wrapped it around the wing mirror, under the wipers, down into the little clip, round the back of the wheel, and into the plug that's under there. Um, just do our final checks now, straps are on, chains on. Mission lock isn't going to come on, handbrake's off, out of gear, and uh, that's it, we're all good to go now.
winch is packed away, winch remote is in the cab. So that's it, let's go. There we go guys, we're back at the yard, offloaded by 10 o'clock, off to Weymouth now. Just make sure everything's where it should be. Yep. Alright. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration of the of the spec lift. I didn't go into too much detail. Um, it wasn't supposed to be a tutorial. It was just for demonstration purposes only and en entertainment purposes that's what I mean it was entertainment purposes only so uh, it's so not a tutorial um, so yeah heading off to Weymouth now once I get out of here it's a bit busy in here today Right, we have the second car picked up. We've been down to Weymouth. Uh, we're then going to pick up one from Wimborne, but that's been cancelled. Uh, so we've come over to Paul, picked up a little 30, Peugeot 307 estate. Um, so yeah, we've got the Vectra and the Peugeot on now. And we're heading back to the yard to get these two off because we've got three over in Bournemouth and we've got to pass the yard to 
anyway, so we might as well just get them taken off. Then we can fit three on without any hassle. That's our last three then. But yeah, and uh, reading by the comments, it sounds like you guys want to know more about the cars, which is uh, which is fair enough. Uh, you want to know what's wrong with them, where they're going, what's happening with them. Um, and I meant to, to fill you in and give you a quick tour of them, but I've, I've forgot to do it today. And today's been a particularly busy day. Um, but we picked up three this morning. We picked up an Astra, um, a Freelander, and something else, wasn't there? I can't remember what else, what, what, what else we picked up. Oh, no, it was four we picked up this morning. Oh, a KA and a Punto. Uh, but they were all... Um, end of life vehicles, ELVs, they come through us. Um, so, yeah, if there's any valuable parts on them, then they'll be taken off and then probably crushed into a cube and then weighed in. <laughs> uh, sometimes we get ELVs come through that are actually worth something, so they'll go through the auction. Uh, but I tend to not know a lot what happens to the vehicles because that decision is made when they're assessed when they get back to the yard. Uh, but yeah, the majority of ELVs will probably get crushed and weighed in. Uh, the Vectra that we have on at the moment is accident damaged. That's been hit in the rear axle, so that's been collected as an insurance vehicle. Uh, but yeah, on behalf of an insurance. And the Peugeot that we picked up uh, is a non-runner and that's come in as an end of life vehicle. Uh, so yeah, that, that will probably be scrapped. It's got 200,000 miles on it, the engine's dead, so it's not worth doing anything with. But uh, the more interesting vehicles that I pick up, I will, uh, if I can and I get a chance, do a little walk around with you and see, uh, see what's going on and see if there are any potential to be uh, be projects. Um, there is a couple that I'm going to pick up over in Bournemouth that we might have a little look at. One's a Honda Accord, um, which is an older one. They're becoming slightly desirable now. And uh, a Volkswagen Golf. I can't remember what the reg is. I think it might be an 05 plate or something. So we, we, we might have a look at that and see, see what the score is with that one as well. But yeah, for now, we're going to head back to the yard. Let's get out of here. Suspension back in normal driving mode. There's either some trucks being serviced, MOT'd, but there doesn't appear to be as many Scania's in here today. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, six, seven, oh, there's three up there. <laughs> they weren't up there before the weekend, so. There could be one or two out today. Certainly not very many. It's slowly getting busier, though. It's picking up. Work is definitely picking up. I don't think I've not had a busy day since I've been back. Right, this, what's this one we're picking up? Ford Mondeo. O2 play. See, look, there's that gear. It's a bit rusty though. It's nice. I definitely work on it. If I picked up something like that, I'd have it. Definitely. But that's in someone's driveway, and I'm not the type to. It's definitely not worth knocking on their door. Put it that way. Right, let's have a little drive through Paul and Bournemouth. Well, it's getting warm now. That is one Mondeo loaded. Not a very good Mondeo. <laughs> right, we've got to go over and pick up a 52 plate Golf now. 52 plate, is that, that's like, that's going to be like Mark 3, isn't it? I 
could be Mark IV. We've got to try and get out of here now. Got to turn right, tail swing on that car is going to be close. made it. There we go. Right, so the only one with any prospect today of possibly being a project is a golf, but it's a 52 plate so I'm not holding that much hope. And it's an under light vehicle as well. over there we're about five minutes away so uh, hopefully we get to do some filming over there and I'll see you in a bit well uh, you'll like this one no keys
you enjoyed that. I'm sweating now. Uh, so yeah, a right point in the backside. Obviously the uh, the keys were lost. The steering was on a lock and very, very, very limited places we can put the truck in these tight streets. So, wasn't helpful at all. Now I'm told that I can't get out that way because there's a height restriction. And I've just checked on Google Maps and there is a house in the way. So, I have to try and find a way out the other way because the way we come in is one way. Really don't want to hit any houses or walls. I'm told the only way out is to our right, which looks tight. So, I give that a go. Yeah. <laughs> We're around that bit. that bit. Yeah, I don't like the look of this. Oh, it's not too bad, apart from the park van. We've got a Mondeo now, but because I was only going to pull that golf so far up, as, as far up as I could get it, uh, I think I have to spec, no no it's not Monday, it's a Honda Accord, I have to spec the Honda Accord, oh wow yeah, that was, that was my first proper challenge I think of trying to get a car on in a really tight position, probably there what, hour and a half? No, it's all good fun. It's all a challenge. Are we going to get round there, are we? Our hopes of getting a half decent finish today was um, quickly demolished, De demolished, diminished when, uh, when we come across that gulf. I did see that it said no keys on the paperwork, but I was really hoping that we'd get straight on it and it would, uh, the wheels would be straight. But unfortunately, there was no such luck. Right, I think we're out in the tight streets. Okay, let's go all over and get this Honda and then get on back to the yard.
Well, that's our Honda Accord loaded. We are good to go. PTO is off. We're in gear. Um, yeah, not, not a very special Honda Accord. And problem with it, it's had its catalytic converter stolen. So, cost a little bit of money to get a new, another one of them put on, unless you can get one second hand. But yeah, sounded like a tank when I drove it onto the spec. Right, where's the sat now telling me to go? Right then left. Kind of, straight across-ish. Ah oh, yeah, okay, I see. Didn't realise we were so close to that roundabout. exciting day. Um, unfortunately I didn't get round to the Renault tour which I said I was going to try and do at the start of the video. Um, but at least I got to show you the spec. Uh, hopefully it's, um, I've got footage of the awkward load of the Volkswagen Golf parked up against the brick wall, no keys, steering lock on, the steering on quite a hefty lock and pointing in the wrong direction but we got there we got there <laughs> made I sweat a little bit maybe work for me money today which uh, makes a change there we go I'll try and do the Renault review in the next video I promise um, but I hope I answered some of your questions in there. If, if you've got any more questions, then ask in the comments. If I don't get round to reply to you in the comments, I'll try and do it in the video. Because uh, I know a lot of you are intrigued about what goes on and what I do and everything else. So, yeah. So, if you Should we try that again? But thank you very much for watching this video. That's not how my outro goes. Oh. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Plenty more just like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers! Oh, can I go home now? I've had enough.